Hi there, I am Justin Pittman, a Solutions Architect with Red Hat. And I'm Tyler Hatton, a Solutions Architect at Worldwide Technology. Today, I'm going to talk about how to use OpenShift, especially at the networking level, including a use case that we often see with customers. I'm here to talk about how you integrate F5 Big IP with OpenShift using container ingress services. So now that we've gone an overview, let's get started in detail. To start, let's go through what OpenShift is. OpenShift is a platform offered by Red Hat that is often called an enterprise Kubernetes platform. But what do we mean by enterprise? In Red Hat's definition, what we typically mean is a long life cycle where you can continue to have your containerized applications managed over long periods of time, especially after upgrades. Those familiar with the upgrade process of an entire Kubernetes platform will realize the value of this. The second strong differentiator for Red Hat is our multi-provider or multi-cloud support. What this means is that Red Hat aims to support multiple different customers in different use cases, whether they be virtual, public cloud, private cloud, or bare metal. Third is we aim for the platform to really be a platform as a service. What that means, since it's often an overloaded term, is that we want to enable everything from ops to dev in the new DevOps type of mantra. That implies that OpenShift is everything from the OS at a lower level stack, including networking, all the way up to fully integrated development solutions, including a CI CD pipeline. So that's what we mean at Red Hat when we talk about an enterprise Kubernetes PaaS that can be deployed to multiple different providers. Let's look in a little bit more detail about the architecture of OpenShift. Most people will be familiar with the basic construct of a container. In the Kubernetes world, this most basic construct is a Kubernetes pod. Inside the pod is usually at least one application. What happens at scale is this becomes many pods, many instances of a running container. A containerized application that gets managed by the cluster. And we have many and many of these running at infinitum. The second construct in Kubernetes is that of a node. A node is basically a container host. It is the workhorse, the basic operating system that allows multiple instances of these container runtimes and manages those locally on the system. So there will be many of these nodes, these worker nodes, inside a managed cluster. We'll do node one through node three here. Within all of this, so all of these nodes together, we will have the Kubernetes cluster itself. So the cluster becomes a managed, orchestrated cluster of nodes that are running, executing, and managing many containerized applications through kubelet into a pod. This begs a couple questions that we need to answer. For example, how does the cluster get managed? Fundamentally, we have a control plane, which is a member of the cluster. It is not external. And the control plane, or what some call master nodes, has several different key cluster-wide operational services. These include the cluster API or Kubernetes API that can be called. This also includes the state of the cluster, which is managed by etcd in OpenShift's case. There are a couple other key services that are cluster-wide, such as a service registry. A service registry enables us to be aware of these multiple pods that are deployed inside the cluster. There's also another key facet that will tie into our later discussion uh, about F5's integration, and that is how networking is done within the cluster. Let's imagine that you have a network internal to the cluster, and this we sometimes call a cluster network. 
each of these nodes would have a cluster IP. But even the pods themselves, if they are servicing up some kind of application that externalizes or offers services outside the cluster, even it would run an IP stack offered and managed through the node. So each of the pods themselves would have a virtual ether or network interface or a virtual NIC in addition to the nodes having their own network interface. So how do we manage this internal cluster networking? Red Hat opted to do this through an SDN, a software defined network. We implemented that SDN through Open vSwitch. Open vSwitch runs on each of the cluster nodes. It is managing the virtual state of the network in, internally through um, virtual uh, LAN IDs, uh, the virtual NICs themselves, uh, the ports are virtualized to, that connect all the different pods into that virtual network, and it also offers bridging or tunneling capability so that services inside the network can be externalized outside the network. So that's the basic view of the cluster I wanted to show in, in review the pods, the nodes, everything is managed at a control plane, and there's an internal network. Eventually, we will have to talk about an external network. And that's what we were segueing into and what we will hear more about uh, with Tyler at WWT. The next thing that we're going to talk about is how you integrate your F5 device. So we'll draw an F5 right here with your OpenShift cluster using something called Container Ingress Services, or CIS for short. Now, when you talk about connecting your F5 device with your OpenShift cluster, there's really three different components to it. The first one is something that we talked about a little bit earlier, which is our VXLAN tunnel. And what that's going to do is basically give us connectivity between our F5 device so it can directly connect to the pods within our OpenShift cluster. And we'll go in a little bit more depth in what that looks like in a second. The second thing that's part of this configuration is something that's known as the Big IP controller. See, I like this for short. And basically what the Big IP controller is going to do is really two different things. It's going to monitor the state of your OpenShift cluster and basically watch as these different pods that represent your applications come online and offline and effectively make modifications to your F5 device that reflect those changes that are occurring within your OpenShift cluster. And the final thing that's really a component of this process is something that we call the config map. And what the config map basically does in this configuration is it will map the services that are provided with these different pods, so services provide network connectivity, and map those back to VIPs and pools that exist on the F5 device. So as we, can, as we create these configuration maps with our deployments to deploy these applications, the config map is basically going to talk to the Big IP controller and create these VIPs and pools dynamically. So what does this look like? So as we mentioned a second ago, the first step of this process is creating that VXLAN tunnel. And the importance of the VXLAN tunnel is basically what it does is, as we talked about in the previous video, the, the, bit, the OpenShift cluster is almost a closed system. It's a private network that these containers share. And what the VXLAN tunnel basically gives us is connectivity between our F5 device or F5 appliance and this internal software-defined network that exists within our OpenShift cluster. And this makes it so the F5 device can monitor maybe the health of these different pods that exist within our cluster. It makes it so the F5 can connect directly to them. It basically makes it so the F5 can talk to them directly. The second thing is this thing called the Big IP controller. And the Big IP controller is basically going to be a service that is deployed right next to the different applications that you're going to deploy within your OpenShift environment. So it acts almost as in, in any other application. It's deployed within a, a pod, very similar to these applications. And as we mentioned, what the controller is going to do is it's basically going to monitor the state of these different pods. Or let's say, for example, we scale out a little bit from 
you know, maybe three nodes to four nodes, and we're scaling out our application as part of that. The big IP controller is basically going to watch the controller of our OpenShift cluster and see that change and basically make modifications to our F5 device to reflect those changes. And then the final thing is this thing called the config map. And the config map is basically going to be a declarative manifest that we are going to send to our OpenShift environment that basically defines the configurations that we want to see on our big IP device that map back to our application within OpenShift. So things such as SSL profiles, HTTP profiles, our load balancing method, those things are going to be defined within our configuration map that we're going to deploy to OpenShift. And as part of that, as part of the config, config map, you can use the declarative language of AS3 that F5 uses to declaratively create configurations within an F5 device. So it's, it's incredibly powerful if you're familiar with AS3, it maps very well to this integration. So this is basically it. There's three different pieces of VXLAN tunnel, again, that give us connectivity between our F5 and OpenShift. The big IP controller that monitors the state of our OpenShift cluster and makes changes to the F5 device. And then the config map that basically define the granular configurations that we want to have defined on our F5 device that map back to our pods within our OpenShift cluster. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about the different use cases where you can use F5 when integrated with our OpenShift environment. Now that Tyler and I discussed the technology components, including F5 and OpenShift, we're going to go through a use case. In particular, the use case that we often see that customers ask about is an ingress use case. Let's take, for example, a web client, could be a user, and they're trying to get down to a web app that's running some service that they want to have access to. How can F5 and OpenShift help us in this use case? Tyler? Yeah, and around this use case, we're gonna focus on really two key business requirements. And the first one is really about performance. So I'll put that on the board. And around this performance use case, this is really where F5 can come into play. From an F5 standpoint, what F5 can provide us is a way of centrally, centrally terminating our SSL traffic so our OpenShift cluster does not have to face that burden. So in this ingress use case, we're gonna have our F5 appliance between our web application and our user or our client at the very top. And what's going to occur is as this traffic comes into our F5 device, it's going to terminate that SSL traffic and it's going to basically send over that unencrypted traffic to our web application. And what again that gives us is really just the ability to reduce the amount of processing burden that our web applications have to face within our OpenShift cluster and really make them so they focus on the services and, 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 and application workloads that these applications are focused on. What the cluster will do after that SSL it, TLS is terminated is for performance, the cluster can still scale out the pods and even the nodes dynamically based on this demand. So you're still going to meet performance both from a secure standpoint and from the capability of the cluster. So back to our diagram of having multiple nodes, multiple pods, you're going to have that scaling out that OpenShift provides you for performance. Absolutely. And if you look at kind of the scalability and back to kind of the previous point about container ingress services, the big IP controller that we're going to have in this cluster is going to monitor that scaling out and perform configurations on our F5 device with that SSL termination in real time. So the F5 device is basically in sync with the scaling out that's occurring with our OpenShift cluster. A component piece within the cluster that you had mentioned was the controller. The F5 controller that's deployed to do the synchronization so that if scaling does happen within the cluster for performance, then both are aware of what's going on. That's exactly it. So talking a little bit more and, and really outside of performance, the, the second thing that we're going to focus on is really around security. So how do we secure these web applications that we're deploying within our OpenShift cluster using our big IP device? And one of those things is a web application firewall. 
So historically, if you look at the F5 device, there are two key um, web application firewall solutions that it provides. One of those is known as Advanced WAF. The other one is known as ASM. And really, that's going to provide us several different things in protecting our applications. Their first one is really around protecting things such as the OWASP top 10. So things such as maybe SQL injection, cross-site requests for Jiri, cross-site scripting attacks. What the F5 is going to do is it's going to, as, as part of its, its, its SSL inspection, as it decrypts that traffic, it's going to look inside that packet and see, does this traffic match one of the signatures of one of these known exploits? And if it sees that traffic and sees it as, as that type of exploit traffic, it's going to block it in real time before it ever hits that web application. But even outside of the OWASP top 10, things such as maybe bot traffic. So if you think about bots, there's good bots and there's bad bots. Good bots maybe things such as like the Google web crawler, bad bots maybe things that, that you know, hackers use to scan your web applications. The F5 is able to basically detect those bots as they try to connect to your web application. Again, block them in real time and protect that application from being scanned and enumerated um, from, a, from a hacker standpoint. So that's the second thing, is really the web application firewall. It protects and inspects that traffic in real time, preventing it from ever reaching your web application. And on the preventing from anything from reaching the applications, I drew a, a bit of a squiggly line here to indicate that by default, OpenShift already ships out of the box with no exposed services. So when you deploy your applications, we have a model of don't trust, and the cluster administrator must explicitly allow certain services that expose these applications. So we're shipping you the ability to control what you want to have access or be accessed externally through like an F5 that's trusted. Absolutely. And I guess the final thing that we can touch on is really observability and visibility around these applications and, and the traffic that, that's coming through our F5 device to our web applications. So F5 has a solution known as telemetry streaming that is able to monitor that traffic as it passes through the F5 device and pass information such as um, the number of known exploits that are being blocked, um, the amount of traffic that's passing through the F5 device, um, you know, the number, the amount of CPU usage on that F5, and offload that to a telemetry device such as a Grafana, for example, and that can be used to dashboard out that information and be consumed in a way that's that's easy to understand. So, that being said, you know, the big requirements around performance, security, and observability. This is really what F5 gives us in conjunction with OpenShift. And if this is something that you're interested in, there's a lab at the very bottom of this YouTube page that gives you information around how you can get access to an on-demand lab to experience these different use cases in real time on your own machine. Thank you.